Hello, guys. Uh, thank you for joining over here uh, with the Startup Summit. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys about uh, when to outsource and when to insource uh, in terms of the digital um, making uh, decision making criteria for all the ideapreneurs. I think uh, the startup community is all about people who have the ideas and want to uh, literally flourish your ideas and uh, take it to the next level. So that's what we are going to talk about today. And we are going to talk about how to find the right resources and which resources you need to find uh, in-house versus whether to outsource everything. And that has been a question for ages. Uh, a lot of our customers also ask us the same question. So I think that will be a great thing to talk about today. All right, so let's just uh, let's just identify um, you know who are those ideapreneurs that we need to talk about. So every startup has um, begun with an amazing idea, and uh, they are trying to solve a real problem in the life, and uh, it uh, definitely reduces the human efforts, and uh, that ensures that the ideapreneurs have to be uh, you know. Um, kind of they're courageous enough to go out there, find a problem to create a solution around it. And they want to really uh, go in the world, tell the uh, tell everybody their story and make a lot of money around it. And they also have different kinds of, uh, you know, associations with that. So many entrepreneurs have uh, the idea of uh, going uh, global with their product and they also have some kind of a social cause associated with it. So many people have, uh, you know, the why has been revolving around many other things. So uh, once you are an ideapreneur, now what's next? How, how do you go from there? And that is what we are going to talk about uh, uh, today. So uh, why startups um, leaders are leaning towards technology? Uh, let's just talk about that first, because what we need to identify is uh, whether anybody who has been um, who has been wanting to create a product and they want to use the right technology in order to empower a certain industry, certain kind of uh, category, certain kind of uh, you know uh, just like a you know better mousetrap whatever you want to create uh, they are using technology and technology has been uh, creating wonders for majority of the businesses especially in the time of covid i think technology has done wonders people um, you know the stores have closed everything is closed but the buying patterns have still remained online and uh, consistently people are buying online and uh, technology has helped uh, businesses enormously in order for them to grow so uh, let's talk about uh, technology is uh, what is exactly how the technology is going to help people. And that's where the ideas come from. So we will be talking everything about the digital products right now because uh, Tactic, my company has been really successful building very, uh, very good digital products for all the people who have the ideas and we literally convert that into uh, great platform. So technology is the most empowering way for businesses and humans uh, to improve their work, quality, lives, everything. Uh, technology uh, companies have been growing multifold because uh, you know what? They create a technology that technology sells on its own because a lot of people have the demand for it. For example, uh, let's talk about Zoom or Zoho or uh, or QuickBooks or uh, Salesforce. All of these are technology companies. Let's talk about Apple. It's a technology company. They have been creating uh, benchmarks over and over and over in order for them to deliver the right thing uh, to the customers and give them a better experience, give them a better lifestyle, they give uh, save them a lot of time. So that's... Um, also a great way to look at it why technology is being used so many times for all the entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs actually are able to leverage that part of it and they are able to give something better to the community so that is also a great way now good ideas can be great with effective partners so when i say partners your technology partners, your uh, finance partners. Let's say um, by partners, I mean they could be the right resources, they could be part of your core team, they could be part of anything. 
but that has to be something like that that should definitely touch your company's uh, goals and your company's core values and so on so uh, good decisions and good ideas they both go hand in hand so you need to make the right decision in order for your good idea to flourish really efficiently and uh, you need to have decisive partners you need to have partners who can help you get there so um, majority of the businesses that you have seen most of them have in their very early days they they could identify the right partners for their business and uh, the partner could be finding the right CFO, finding the right CTO, finding the right development team, finding the right uh, people who are able to strategize things, finding the right marketing people, and so on and so forth. So what happens is it's, it becomes a cluster of people around you who is going, who basically are going to come forward, join hands with you, and they are going to be the ones who are going to give you the kind of knowledge, the uh, you know, the time, the efforts, the direction, everything, and all of that together builds an amazing company around it. So what I'm trying to give you right now is the core value of who those people are going to be, where those people are need to be, and who those people or how do you hire those people and where do they need to be right so what is going to be their geolocation whether you need to hire them and in-house whether you want to hire them and hire a company who, who just needs to you can just give them a contract they outsource the whole thing and then build the build the overall product how would how are you going to do that what is the benefits of doing the both things uh, that is something that we are going to discuss and that's going to be a very crucial point because every company that wants to flourish they need to have the right people around them if they don't the company will have a serious problem because their core values will be jeopardized and we don't want that to happen so let's just keep it uh, in a way that how we are going to do that so my next slide is going to talk about insourcing of why when and what so why are we uh, why are we insourcing so insourcing happens uh, so basically what is insourcing let's just talk about that first so anybody you uh, you bring on board on your company's payroll is an insourced uh, guy or insourced person that you have hired with your company what that ensures or why do you need to do that is your business's agility uh, is definitely better in that way you can uh, you can definitely have a transformational needs or anything that is get, you know, getting served in your early days you uh, have a reduced risk and availability of the knowledge because you have the person right there you can have the access to that person immediately and you always have uh, you always are able to make the uh, kind of a decision making process becomes easier plus your trade secrets are always with you because the guy is right in front of you working right in front of you so there is a reduced risk there uh, when do you need to insource so insourcing is uh, done uh, for investing in leadership right so majorly you want to hire leaders in your company here is your chance to do that you need to hire the leadership team uh, which Basically, that team will be creating the credibility in the market. That team will have the right business acumen. That team will have the right kind of business strategy. And everything around your business will be created by that core team of yours. And that team has to be in source. That team has to be on board. That team ha has to be on your payroll. And whether you give them just the equity of the company, whether you give them, uh, whether you make them on payroll, but you need to have a strong partnership with them. You need to identify those people really nicely and you need to take your time in order to identify the right people for, and culturally fit people uh, for your company in order for you to grow. And because you guys have the same vision, because you, uh, because your leadership team if they have the same vision, they have the same kind of business strategy, they have the same kind of business acumen, and the knowledge transfer happens really easy. And that's uh, that's when the company really blossom. Uh, so what? Uh, so we talked about why do you want to uh, insource? When do you need to insource? 
And now you, we are going to talk about what are we going to insource. So there are multiple different flavors of uh, projects that we have uh, been working with. And many of the projects have different kinds of roles which are insourced. Many of the different kinds of things that are, uh, that are basically not insourced and uh, they are basically outsourced. So you know, we need to talk about the major profiles which are kind of something that you need to consider having insourced. So seed round investment, uh, once you have that, you should definitely go with your chief technology officer, your CTO, CMO, product manager. Those are the guys that you need to onboard. They, those are the guys that you definitely need to insource. After you have your angel investment round, then you can have a business strategist, your tech lead, you have uh, your solution specialist, you have your subject matter expert, you have your human resources, all of them can be insourced afterwards first build your core team your cto cmo product manager these are the main three key ingredients for people who want who wants to become i'm sorry uh, who wants to become the technology uh, company and who wants to create a digital product around it uh, these are the three key people that you need to hire first um, of course, you have your seed round investment, so you already have the investment, you are financially sound, so that's the premise around here, but always insource the key people who play a strategic role and can make an impact in your efficient and effective decision making. That's, that's the bottom line here. So you need to have people who would be making the strategic role, and uh, you, uh, those are the guys who are going to be your right partners. Uh, now come coming to the outsourcing and why when and what outsourcing why do you need to outsource yes we have been talking about this for ages outsourcing is done mainly for the work why do you need to do it i mean uh, definitely there is a cost factor to it there is definitely you know the the important um, the less important aspects of the businesses can be handled remotely and uh, you can definitely have uh, global talent attracted to your company you can definitely have a person working from india to russia to ukraine you have a person in uh, somewhere in europe uh, you can have all those different kinds of flavors working on your project and uh, you can have different kind of projects uh, outsourced to them they can get their job done they can come back to you and say this is what we are done with but your strategic team will keep on uh, identifying how they are going to leverage that product and how they are going to fit into your bigger picture in order for you to flourish. So why is pretty clear. Now, when do you need to hire those guys? Uh, I mean, outsourcing basically needs to start happen in the very beginning once you have your core team ready and once you have your business plan ready. You need to uh, start moving into development. You need to start creating your product. You need to start doing the UI and UX and all of that. And that's when you need to literally hire somebody who can who can have uh, who can play that role. You can have a company who will, who is specializing in certain industries, certain kind of technologies, and you can hire them as your outsourcing partners. Uh, and you can also have uh, you can also identify the right people around it. And you need to identify whether they are what are the coding standards, how are they going to develop, uh, what is the process like and so on and so forth so there are many different areas but yeah when do you need to do it you need to do it immediately once you get started with that right so uh, after that what do you need to outsource so kind of uh, different kind of roles that are impacting in your companies but they are not like heavily impacting your company those are the roles that can be outsourced so that you can reduce your mitigate your risk rather and you can you can give certain part of the uh, part of the business development side of it. I mean, kind of the product development side of it to a company who literally is breathing, eating, uh, you know, sleeping onto those products only, and they they literally have been doing amazing with those kind of products. So, what are the key areas or key people that you can outsource? Uh, project managers, you can definitely outsource your project management, you can outsource your front end and back end developers, you can outsource your business analysis, and the business analyst role can definitely be outsourced. Solution architect, yes, definitely has to be outsourced. Uh, team coordinator, since your entire team will be out, 
uh, I think you will need, if it's a large uh, team, then you need a team coordinator, you need a designer, and the app developer. So uh, mobile applications, web applications, those developers needs to be handled. Uh, the front end guys uh, also, and the designers. So these are the major areas which can be outsourced, which directly impacts on your product, but it doesn't uh, doesn't deviate anything from your core values because they will, these people will be working on the commands that are given to them. These people will be working on the kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of scope of work that has been defined for them, the kind of functional requirement or the business requirement that has been given to them, and they build a nice, nice and clean product around it. So that would be a really nice way of looking at it. Uh, so I always say build sustainable relationship with an outsourcing partner who can grow strategically with your vision of scaling up. So identify an outsourcing partner who is basically going to scale up with you, scale down with you, no matter, so build an elastic team where if you want five developers, 10 developers from some company, or if you want uh, you know, a team of five developers, a project manager, QA guy, and business analyst, then you, you should be able to create that kind of a thing. Uh, later in the future, if you need 20 more, that company or the partner should be able to grow with you, should be able to give you that kind of knowledge pool to scale up with you. So that's the, uh, that's the second part of it. The, the entire premise of doing this exercise is to identify what really worked for our customers. Um, so I can tell you with my 11 years of experience of building amazing digital products for the, for the like-minded companies, I can say that uh, neither insourcing alone not outsourcing alone can work it's always a combination of the two so you need to always build a kind of a scalable model where there are certain profiles like like we discussed in the previous uh, slides certain profiles always have to be in source certain profiles can be outsourced if you're not able to identify those right kind of outsourcing partners till that point of time yes you can insource them but the moment you find them start using that uh, how is it going to help you? So the benefits that we can talk about is uh, cost-benefit analysis. So basically outsourcing partner, if you find somebody in Romania or India or in uh, you know the, anywhere in Indonesia or, uh, or Ukraine, you'll be able to find somebody at a much cheaper price uh, that will improve your cost and your cost-benefit analysis will be skyrocketing. Uh, of course, uh, with the trustworthiness uh, factor, it will also improve because your insourcing of the resources will be really trustworthy. They'll be working on your stuff and they will be working with you on the strategic decisions. So because those are the strategic decisions that are being made in-house and those are the people who, are, who have joined hands with you, those are the guys who are going to be able to give you the trust and the outsourcing team will be working on their their uh, uh, commands so basically they will be developing something that is given to them in terms of the direction and not the entire strategy around it so uh, third part is elastic team as we discussed you can scale up or down at any point of time with the outsourcing model and with the insourcing model uh, the scaling up and down can be a bit tricky uh, but uh, in many of the countries there are different kinds of laws around uh, you know if you want to leave somebody you want to hire somebody there are different kinds of uh, things that you need to take care of. So rather, uh, you know, the less, uh, kind of less important profiles or the less impactful pr uh, profiles can be outsourced. So outsource your development, outsource your uh, project management, outsource your those things. That's going to be perfectly fine because you still have your core DNA working with you. So that would be making sure that you will be keeping your company's DNA intact while the other company is getting you the right product done for a much cost effective price. Uh, reduced liabilities because you don't have to keep all those outsourced partners uh, on your payroll, your liabilities reduces, you don't have to pay for their insurance, you don't have to pay for anything, you just pay them once or pay them on, on a certain contract and they're done. Um, 
ability to identify the global talent, which means you will be able to identify the talent anywhere in the world. You uh, you will be, uh, if you have like multiple different products that you're working on or multiple different modules of a product that you're working on, and one company is really good at doing that, but that company is sitting in Ukraine, you can have that product done by the Ukrainian team. Another product that you have, which is amazing in terms of the outsourcing partner that you are able to find is in India, you can identify that uh, partner and get them on board, or you can outsource everything to one company and let them identify the global talent that they want, and they will be able to get you that talent. Uh, because you have you will be working on the global time zones your company will have the operations running 24 7 so i think uh, with that model your you will constantly your company is constantly running and running and running in the circle and you are constantly running towards your goals so that's going to be another benefit uh of creating this amazing product around it and uh i think uh using the hybrid model will definitely help you get to that point uh, finally, to summarize the whole thing, I would say go hybrid and leverage the benefits of insourcing and outsourcing both. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Nisarg. I own a company called Tactic Solutions. Uh, here are my details. We build and breathe and do everything about technology, and uh, we love uh, using this uh, model of going uh, hybrid and help a lot of companies build their dream products. So uh, thank you so much for listening to us. If there are any other questions, I'd like to answer them all. Thank you and have a great day.